The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We have been discussing chapter 10, which we concluded, and we'll start now chapter 11. Chapter 11 is Vishwarupa Darshan Yoga, Yoga of the Revelation of the Cosmic Form. So we have seen in Bhagavad Gita, in general, that first six chapters give us the understanding of what the reality is. We had the paradigm shift in the chapter 2, that what I consider myself is not me, that I, which I call I, is imperishable, immutable. But what dies is the body only. So that was the paradigm. Right now I consider this to be me. I was born at one point of time, and I'll die in another point of time. And that's the end of my story. Bhagavan said in chapter 2 that that is not the case. Yourself is imperishable, immutable. And then with that revelation, Bhagavan had continued to tell us how a limited being, the conditioned the consciousness, the consciousness right now in me is conditioned by my mind, my intellect, and my body. Like this room space. Room space is the same universal space Right now is conditioned by the floor, walls, and ceiling. Therefore, we see it as room space. So this conditioned consciousness, which we call jiva, is that I live as, a, as an individual, how I should still live in this life. After having that understanding the self is immutable, I still have to deal with my day-to-day -day life as an individual, as the limited ego this conditioned consciousness. So rest of the chapters in the first segment of Bhagavad Gita from chapter 3rd through 6, we have seen how to act in this world. And Bhagavan clearly defined that you have to transform your karma into karma yoga. When you put any action, then you will have a reaction from the world outside, which we call the karma phala. But Bhagavan said that you are bound by your karma phala only if you are acting selfishly. But if you act selflessly, then the karma phala will not bind you. So, Bhagavan said, act in this world, because you act, you must, but you should act in the manner of karma yoga. And sixth chapter itself culminated in the dhyana yoga, yoga of meditation. And now that I have learned how to act in this world, my quest should be to identify with that supreme self, which we talked about in chapter 2, that which is immutable, imperishable. Myself, which I considered limited, is not limited. It's part of this universal self, and I need to identify with that. And that's chapter 6, Dhyana Yoga. So Dhyana Yoga told us how to meditate on that self. But still the question remains what to meditate upon. From chapter 7 onwards, is trying to describe something which is undescribable. Is trying to describe the nature of the supreme being which has no limitations, no qualities, no attributes. But Bhagavan is trying to describe in a manner which we can understand. He's taking one step at a time for us. In chapter 7, he described that there are two prakritis. One is lower nature, another is higher nature. Lower nature is that which is manifested, that which I can perceive, feel, and think about. This world, this world which I see, is made up of five great elements, mind, intellect, and ego. That constitute my world. And Bhagavan said, that's my lower prakriti, which is tangible, which I can feel, touch, and vouch for it that it is here. The chair is here, table is here, you are here, I am here, room is here. We have no doubt about it. Seeing is believing. I see it. So Bhagavan said, that's my lower prakriti. 
you see me every day in my lower prakriti but there is a higher prakriti which supports this lower prakriti the lower prakriti is only existing because of that higher prakriti that is the unmanifest self so then bhagwan has in the eighth chapter described how to understand that higher prakriti which was akshara brahma yoga the yoga of the imperishable brahman that i am the source of all beings and all beings are in me and chapter 9 which is raja vidya raja guhya yoga yoga of royal shakra the royal shakra bhagwan said in beginning bhagwan said that i am in all beings and then and again he comes back and said but actually i am not in them but they are in me paradox about what is in what a space in my car or car is in the space that conundrum you have to solve and when my car was manufactured in germany and then sealed tight and transported to united states is the space inside the car is german space or american space because when it was sealed tight it was german space now right in front of our building is it a german space inside that car or american space Well, it's American space because it's in America. But when it was German, it was German space. How can that be? Is it because I see car space from a limited perception, but actually car is in the space. Car is traveling in the space. Space is not traveling in the car. So in the same way, Bhagwan said, "I am not in them, but they are in me." They means all that manifest beings and things are in me, but I am not in them. then he comes back and says they are also not in me in reality they are not contaminating my pure self they do not really exist in my pure being they exist only in your perception it is like the example of snake and rope snake exist as long as i perceive the snake but in rope there is no snake there is never a snake in the rope So Bhagwan has been taking us one step at a time to tell us how to see this reality both at the micro level as my day to day life and a macro level as my supreme self. And then Arjun comes back and said, "Bhaiya, yeah, this is all well and good, but show me some examples in this world." So we have chapter ten. Bhagwan described many examples. Anything which is glorious, splendid, wonderful, Bhagwan said that because of me, that because of my presence. It is something like if I tell somebody in a village where is there is no electricity, my whole house is electrified. He said, "What does that mean?" He said, "That means electricity is in my entire house." And when he comes in to show me electricity, all I can say is, "Anything which glows in this house." anything which is heating in this house anything which is cooling in this house is all because of electricity consider that everything which you see light heat cool air all that is because of the electricity is present in my house bhagwan in that manner explains to arjuna that anything wonderful you see in this world is because of me in that chapter bhagwan also had made promise In verse eleven, it was ten and eleven actually. He said, "Tesam satat yukta nam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tum yen mam upayanti the." Those who are steadfastly worshiping me with love, I give them yoga buddhi. A normal buddhi can decipher what's in this world, but this conundrum my buddhi cannot solve. how can the space is in the car or car is in the space how could i be in the bhagwan self or bhagwan is in me bhagwan said those who constantly stayed fastly worship me and think about me i give them this buddhi with which they can overcome this limitation mam upayanti the they come to understand me and then he made a promise that तेषाम एव अनुकंपार्थम टू देम आउट ऑफ मियर कंपैशन अहम अज्ञान जम तम नाशयामी आत्मभावस्त ज्ञान दीपेन भास्वता आउट ऑफ मियर कंपैशन फॉर देम आई डिस्ट्रॉय द डार्कनेस ऑफ इग्नोरेंस बाय द लाइट ऑफ नॉलेज 
that was his promise so now in chapter 11 arjun comes back and validates that bhagwan does fulfill his promise chapter 11 starts with arjuna statement mat anugrahaya paramam guhyam adhyatma sangritam yatvaya uktam vachahatena mohoyam vigato mama remember in chapter 10 in verse 11 bhagwan said that whoever follows me i destroy ignorance in them arjuna said yes you exactly did that you know i can vouch for it then whatever you promise you fulfill it's like some product you buy you will have customers review which can kind of validate yes we bought this refrigerator from ge and it is wonderful design is fine it functions fine all of that that ge said in the booklet it works out exactly that way so that's like customers review he is arjuna is giving you customers review what bhagwan said that i will remove the darkness of ignorance in your heart mat anugrahaya out of compassion for me bhagwan is tesa manu kampartham out of compassion for them i'll do this arjuna said yes you are right out of compassion for me paramam guhyam adhyatma sangnitam you have given me the highest secret about myself about the self yat tvaya uktam vachatena and by these words of yours moho am vigato mama my delusion is gone bhagwan has promised that if you steadfastly worship me i'll remove darkness in your heart and arjuna said i can vouch for it bhagwan that you told me so and with your words of wisdom about what the nature of the self is in last four chapters my delusion is gone my delusion was about whether i should fight this war or not my delusion was about am i supposed to kill my kith and kin they are separate from me i am separate from them and how can i kill them bhagwan with your this words of wisdom that delusion is gone now i don't consider them to be separate from me anymore however he said bhava apyayo hi bhutanam shruto vistarasho maya he is telling bhagwan what he has understood so far so it is like any good student the swami ji says if he wants to ask a question to a teacher he first tells the teacher what he understood so far then i have been learning from you this rag and i understood i have to do this however and then you can put a question is so what i don't understand is so therefore he said by your grace my delusion is gone your words were nectar like and very enlightening so my i am not deluded anymore i understand the nature of the self bhava apyayo hi bhutanam shruto vistara somaya you have told me in detail and i heard the creation and destruction of all beings and how they come out of you and they get destroyed in you one in last chapter say i am also the beginning middle and end of all things and beings that means i come into the existence because of bhagwan i remain in existence because of bhagwan and i die because of bhagwan bhava apyay bhava is creation apyay is destruction hi bhutana all being that which exists in the being or a thing is a bhuta truto vistarosam i heard in detail from you patta kamana patraksa mahatmyam api cha avyayam not only that that i have heard about the creation and destruction of all things and beings in this world i also heard about your own self the greatest of your own self, mahatmyam api cha avyayam and your indisputable immutable imperishable glory of yours that i heard from you kamala patraksha lotus eyed is one of the name for lord krishna so he said i understood your nature as the supreme being he also understood the nature of perishable things and beings how they come into existence and then they perish into your own self just like the waves come out of the ocean and die in ocean ocean remains what it is evam etad yatha atha tvam atmaram parameshwara drashtum ichhami te rupam 
Aishwaram Purushottamam. Here comes the request. I understood your nature. I understood the nature of the things in being. But that's not good enough for me. That does not give me the complete picture. It is something like you can explain about the electricity by the light and heat and cool air coming out of my air conditioner. That doesn't tell me anything about electricity really. It only tells me the manifestation of electricity. If I want to understand electricity, I have to see all the equipment in electricity. So up till now, Bhagawan had shown his presence in things and beings. Arjun said, I want to see actually all things and beings in you. So it's a different point of perspective. First I wanted to see to how to see gold in all gold ornament. That mm-hmm. this is how I can detect gold in gold ornament. Well, that some somewhat easy process to figure out how to find gold in gold ornament. But see, the gold ornament in gold requires a creative thinking, a different way of looking at things. I always wonder, you know, I work with all real estate developers because I'm an architect, a commercial architect. I may pass by that plot of land 20 times in a month. Then somebody comes and says, Neil, that land, we're going to put a hotel there. He says, how do you know that the hotel will work there? He says, I can see right there that if there's a hotel, there will work. It requires a very creative thinking to see things which is not there but could be there, could be created there. Some very famous sculptor said, somebody asked, how did you know how to create this sculpture? I think it's about David's, but it could be anywhere. The artist said, the sculpture was already in that marble. All I had to do is remove unnecessary parts. He could see, as an artist, he could see that sculpture in that marble in his mind's eye, and then all he has to do is remove things which is not associated with that. So it requires a very different type of a vision to see things in its source. We can see source in things, but now I want to see the things in the source. So therefore, he says, evam etad yatha atta, just as you said, that all things exist in you. Tvam atmanam parameshwara. Oh, parameshwara. As you said, the all things exist in you. Drastum ichami, te rupam aishwaram purusvattamam. I want to see that form of yours. Where I can see you in totality and all things and beings in you. He's asking a little too much. <laughs> Arjun realized that I'm going a little beyond my capacity. So therefore he said, manyase yadi tatsakyam. If you think it is possible. Not that I want to say, show me. Show me is like doubting your teacher. But he said, no, I'm not doubting you. I'm just desiring to say. And I'm not going to show that I'm capable of saying it. Manya said, yadi tat sakyam maya drastamiti prabhu. Oh Lord, if you think that I'm capable of seeing that form, I'm capable of understanding this totality, yogeshwaraha tataha metvam, Dasaya Atmanam Avyayam. And oh Lord of Yoga. Because this is the greatest yoga where you can see. Only Yogeshwar can, one who is the Lord of Yoga can unite you with that totality. Therefore, Tome Darsayam Atmanam Avyayam. Show me your immutable form which includes everything in it. We'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukha Bhagbave Om Shantihi 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 Harihiyo 
ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿಹಿಯೋ